The Israelis have a plan to destroy the Palestinian economy in the Gaza Strip and keep it attached to the Israeli side. This is an Israeli occupation systematic program to destroy the structure of the economy to achieve political goals. The industry sector is one of the most important economic sectors in the West Bank and Gaza, where it represents 18 to 20 percent from the national gross product of Palestine. This percentage made it come second after the agricultural sector that represents 23 to 24 percent. The industry declined due to the practices of the Israeli occupation's consequent governments since the eruption of Al-Aqsa Intifada back in 2000. The contribution of the industrial sector deteriorated in the Gaza Strip as a result of the Israeli occupation impediment in Gaza and the West Bank. On the other hand, the increased cost of production factors led to decreased contribution that doesn't exceed 12 percent and sometimes 6 percent. Furthermore, the political division added insult to injury in the sense of further deterioration of the industrial sector, while the Gaza war further strengthened that siege affecting the role of industry in the economy. We reached a very advanced stage in the industrial field before the siege, and the industry was of a high quality and was exported abroad and to Israel as well. Those industries included food, furniture, textile, and clothes. The Israeli occupation seeks to keep the Palestinians attached to occupation since the occupation of Palestine in 1948. Palestinians were not allowed to be independent in any of the vital fields, including economic ones and namely industrial sector. I was a prisoner in the 70s. I have read an article by the Israeli Minister of Economic Affairs. He was saying that he would turn Palestinian people to agriculture and construction workers. The Israeli intellect constantly conducts research and studies to prevent the Palestinian people from progress at the industry level, to join the rest of the people and have an independent national economy. Talab Bulbul is one of the residents of a Zaytun neighborhood of Gaza. He was imprisoned for a few years. When he was released, there was nothing much engraved in his memory about cruelty of oppressor and the darkness of cells. He came back to Gaza hoping to start a new stage in his life full of construction and work. I began the first step as a simple person by my own personal effort. I began to turn to metal work because it was a hobby of mine. I started in this area and started my life working with two workers as a simple man establishing the first seed of metal work in the 70s. Bulbul has been seeking to develop his factory, but was always failed by occupation. 
who turned down his repeated requests for needed permits. I had been suffering during the Israeli occupation of the Gaza Strip. When I used to apply for a municipal license or government license or anything, they would reject my request within 24 hours. But I was determined about continuing my drive to build industrial core in metal work. I continued in this way until the big uprising of the Palestinian people that began in the Gaza Strip. The uprising had helped us so much to remove the occupation that was existing and was besieging us everywhere and in every industry and in every move and direction possible to develop the Palestinian national economy. The Israelis have a plan to destroy the Palestinian economy in the Gaza Strip and keep it attached to the Israeli side, while Gaza Strip remains as a consumer market for Israeli products. Israeli occupation could not inhibit development of Bulbul's factory, but production capacity that could cover the needs of the entire Gaza Strip. The matter took further turn, but the occupation inhibited the achievement of that factory. This development included engineering metalwork like production lines for stoves and gas tubes. After that, we succeeded in creating a production line of electric water heaters. Our factory produced 5,000 gas stoves a month, covering the needs of the West Bank and Gaza Strip and part of the Palestinians in the occupied Palestine in 1948. After the arrival of samples from our factory to Saudi Arabia, the signed agreements were sufficient to make our factory work non-stop as well as other complementary factories. But we couldn't deliver the goods to Saudi Arabia because of the siege imposed on us. There are very advanced and high quality industries in the Gaza Strip. There are wanted in the West Bank markets and abroad as well. But the arrogant Israeli occupation did not allow us to export through the Karma Salem crossing, where the Israeli occupation rejected all proposals to facilitate the export process. Global's factory didn't stop production, but the number of workers declined to the least number of workers since its inception, as a result of the siege and banning of flow of products between Gaza, West Bank, and Palestine occupied in 1948. The situation of Bulbul's factory further deteriorated. The factory was totally destroyed with all equipment on the 14th of January around 1 a.m. I challenged the Israeli occupation that my factory had manufactured any military craft items at all. I'm a Palestinian working on peaceful products only. The Israeli occupation targeted everyone in the Gaza Strip. I say that economic destruction does not exclude human beings and stones, as it was designed to undermine and destroy the Palestinian economy in the Gaza Strip through the destruction of houses, factories, shops, and increasing unemployment. The unemployment rate in the Gaza Strip climbed to 40% as a result of this destruction and closure of hundreds of factories and displaced thousands of workers in textile and sewing that are very advanced industries in the Gaza Strip. Hundreds of Palestinian households rely on tailoring to earn a living. It is known in Gaza that most of household members work at the same tailoring workshop at the same house to earn living, such as Adil Limzanin, one of the residents of Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. In 2003, we moved the sewing factory from Jabalia refugee camp to Azbet Abadrabu in a building that consisted of stores where we made the sewing factory, in addition to seven apartments. We were not obliged to sew any type of clothing, but we sew men's, women's, and children's trousers, shirts, skirts, and dresses for everything the market needed 
because we cannot restrict ourselves to any particular work. At Hezb al-Abid Rabbu area, north of Gaza, was the home and factory of Adel's family, who is walking in the area, recalling the tailoring machines that were all over the place, and his family members who worked hard in the workshop to earn a living for them and others to live in dignity. There were 15 sewing machines and 12 to 13 skilled workers. There were also five to six outsider ironing workers. There were also three workers for the collar and buttons and about five or four cleaners as needed for the cleaning task. Adil goes to the roof of his house with a heartache on the house that is being rebuilt after coming to rubbles by the Israeli occupation and Israeli soldiers who passed by the area. The factory was destroyed in 2008 during the last war, al Khan War. From day one of the war, the Israeli occupation broke into the house and took my mother out of it. When she asked them where to go, they took her to my uncle's house, across from our house. There were around 30 soldiers. I called one of them, then the officer noticed and called me, telling me that the house would be bombed. I told him that this house is my cousin's, and that I'm the head of the family, and that I was ready to go to them if anything was wrong with my cousin. The officer asked me to go, and after about two hours, they destroyed the five-story house and the mosque and half of my own house. Three years after the Gaza war, Adel still waiting for the reconstruction of his house to come to an end after a long suppression. We are working based on the fact that the future will be better, God willing. We prepare what we can. I have some machines that I can secure, some in my brother's house, and some are at my friend's stores. This means I will try to arrange and to resume work in the factory. Of course, I will bring them back to the factory so that we resume the work we used to do. Palestinian human expertise and resources exist. Human resources are the most important element of production factors and is competitive and in transition from quantitative to qualitative side. Some goods were significantly competitive and were exported to Europe, like Spain as well as Italy, where they competed with some Spanish and Italian goods. Furniture is one of those most internationally competing commodities of Palestine. Gaza is unique among all other Palestinian cities when it comes to furniture. This line of industry depends on creativity and amusement, whereas that's the case with Mohammed Mujtaha's company that gained admiration of one European country that was ready to host the company in one of the key exhibitions held in that state. I took part in the exhibition 